We tend to imagine the medieval castle as a place of romance. We picture colourful tapestries, grand feasts and fairy tales. But if you actually woke up here in 1250 AD, could you actually survive a single day in a real medieval castle? Forget the fairy tales. There is no electricity, no plumbing, no heating and danger lurking in every shadow. Before the sun even rises, the temperature inside is barely above freezing. There is no glass in the windows, just crude wooden shutters rattling against the biting English wind. And then the smell hits you. The air isn't fresh. It is thick with the scent of wet wool, animal waste and stale smoke that has been trapped in the stone for decades. This isn't a palace. It is a machine made of stone waking up for survival. The day begins not with the Lord, but with the invisible army of servants. While the royals sleep under piles of heavy furs, the central courtyard transforms into a noisy factory. The sound is deafening. Blacksmiths hammering iron for horseshoes, carpenters repairing carts, and stable hands grooming 50 war horses. Fetch more straw for the farrier. Nearly finished with this one. He's restless this morn. See to his tack next. The master rides soon. But the hardest job belongs to the water carriers. There is no plumbing here. Every single drop of water for washing, cooking and cleaning must be drawn from the deep well and hauled up by hand. It is a never-ending cycle of back-breaking labour. Without these buckets moving every hour, the castle stops functioning before noon. The heart of this machine is the kitchen. If you look at the castle layout, you'll notice the kitchen is often a separate building, connected only by a stone walkway. This wasn't an accident. It was fire safety. If the kitchen goes up in flames, the rest of the fortress survives. Inside, it is an industrial slaughterhouse. The fireplaces are colossal, wide enough to roast an entire ox on a spit. The heat here is unbearable a stark contrast to the freezing stone everywhere else. The cooks aren't making gourmet meals. They are fueling an army. They are churning out salted meats, heavy pottage and hundreds of loaves of coarse bread to feed 500 hungry mouths before the sun hits its peak. A fine feast. Let us drink to the king. By midday, life centers on the Great Hall. But look closely at the design. Everything you see is part of a constant, losing battle against the cold. Those beautiful tapestries on the walls, they aren't just art, they are insulation, trapping a layer of air against the freezing granite to stop the, the room from turning into tomorrow. an icebox. The floor is covered in rushes, breaks. dried grasses and herbs, they keep your feet off the ice-cold stone, but they also hide the dirt, bones and scraps dropped by dogs. And the light, or the lack of it. Tomorrow. With only narrow slit windows, the hall is perpetually dim. It smells of beeswax, burning tallow fat, and the stinging smoke from the central half that hovers just above your head. Darkness was always just one candle flicker away. But there is one aspect of castle life even the movies ignore. The smell. Sanitation was a marvel of gravity and gross engineering. They used the garderobe, a stone seat jutting out from the castle wall. Waste fell down a long shaft directly into the moat or a cesspit below, creating a permanent visible stain on the castle walls. But here is the strangest fact. 
they actually hung their expensive clothes inside the toilet shaft. Why? Because the ammonia fumes rising from the urine were so strong, they killed the fleas and moths on the fabric. Hygiene was a luxury. A hot bath required hauling 40 buckets of water and heating them over a fire. Most people simply didn't bother. As you walk the corridors, you realize the castle feels hostile. That is by design. Every stone is placed to kill an intruder. Look at the stairwells. They spiral tightly to the right. This forces an attacking swordsman to use his left hand, while the defending knight above has free range to swing his sword. The murder holes in the ceiling aren't for ventilation. They are traps for dropping boiling water, hot sand or heavy rocks on anyone who breaches the gate. The windows are narrow slits, perfect for firing a longbow out, but impossible for an enemy to shoot an arrow in. The afternoon is dedicated to one thing, paranoia. A castle exists for one reason, to survive a siege. Every day is a preparation for the unforeseen. In the armory, Fletchers are working frantically, making thousands of arrows to keep the stockpiles full. The storage cellars are packed with salted meat, dried grain and pickled fish. Enough to last six months if the gates are locked today. The guards on the battlements aren't looking at the view, they are scanning the horizon for dust. In the medieval world, peace was just a temporary break. War was inevitable. Sunset brings the curfew, literally couvre feu or cover the fire. To prevent the castle from burning down while everyone sleeps, all fires were dampened and covered with metal lids. The massive iron portcullis gate grinds shut. The drawbridge is winched up, severing the connection to the land. The castle becomes an island of stone in the dark. Inside, the great hall falls silent. Shadows stretch across the floor as the last candles burn out. Safe behind ten feet of granite, the castle sleeps. Ready to wake up and do it all again, if they survive the night.